Oh, there's something in a tree, sir. Watch out! Whoa. Let's get out of here! Run! They stopped. You all right? Yeah. That was crazy. We just got charged by a couple elephants. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Watch out, they're coming back. Whoa. I'm Cyril Choquet, and I travel the world chasing monster fish. Now this is what we call a giant. This time, I'm in West Africa, in Gabon, after a fish I tried to catch a few years ago, the African Kubera, an extremely powerful fish, even capable of dragging a man overboard. Unstoppable! To find it, I'm gonna have to go deep into the wild, where danger is everywhere. Whoa, what's that? Out here, you gotta keep your guard up. In the water, and in the jungle. But it's worth the risk. Because the rewards are huge. That's big, Kabera. I'm in Gabon, West Africa, on a mission to finally catch a giant African Kubera. I've tried and I've come really close to getting one before, but I couldn't actually land one. A few years ago, I tried to catch a big African Kubera in Guinea-Bissau. I tried everything. I even sought the advice of a sorcerer so my luck would change. But besides getting spat in the face, it didn't change much. The fish kept winning. So this time, I hope a little luck is on my side. 85% of Gabon is covered by very dense tropical rainforest, while the remainder is savanna. It's been raining a lot, that's good for the fish. The lagoons are gonna be full. According to my research, the best parts to catch a giant kibera are at the mouth of the lagoons along the Atlantic coast. But getting there is a challenge. With the rain, the trail that leads to the ocean has gone from bad to worse. Oh man. And now, I think I have a real problem. The trail is completely flooded for at least 400 feet. That's a long one. Looks pretty deep too. But here it's way too mucky and soft. It's too risky driving through here. Take this. Look at that. I'm gonna get stuck for sure. Well, I guess I have no choice. Gotta give it a shot. Here we go. I have to go slowly. I have no idea how deep it gets. It's getting deeper here. You know, this car is made for this kind of stuff because the air intake is really high. It's called a snorkel. But don't do this with any, with a, with a regular car, because you'll get stuck for sure. All right, did it. That's a good sign, the road is turning to sand, so. We must be getting close to the ocean right now.
On the other side of this lagoon is the Atlantic coast, with hundreds of miles of wild and remote beaches. The mix of salt water and fresh water from the rivers create ideal, nutrient-rich environments in the lagoons, attracting big predator fish like cabaras, but also sharks and crocodiles. I'm gonna try on the ocean side of the lagoon, testing my bait as far as possible into the surf, where cabaras hunt. The reason why I'm using such a long rod is so I can cast the bait super far past the surf. That's where most of the big predator fish are. And also, it gives me a good angle on the line, so the waves don't affect the line that much. It don't move the bait from the bottom. When it gets dark, big predator fish come closer to shore and into the mouths of the lagoons to hunt. I don't know what I have yet. It could be anything, but one thing's for sure, it's really powerful. I don't think it's a cabara. I think it's a shark. But what's weird is that I don't feel the big head shakes like a shark. Oh, it's a guitar fish. I just saw the fish. With all the waves, landing this fish is gonna be tough, especially because I don't wanna drag it onto the sand. It's really not good for the fish. I'm gonna wait for a big wave to push it up to the beach. Woo. Look at that beautiful guitar fish. This fish has a little bit of an identity crisis. Look, because it's got a, it's got a head that looks like a ray and a and a tail of a shark. The reason it's called a guitar fish, it looks like a guitar. It's gone. <laughs> gone. This morning, I'm gonna cast some lures for Cabera at the mouth of a different lagoon. That's beautiful. That is Africa right there. Elephants have the most keen sense of smell in the entire animal kingdom. And I'm not sure what it smells like, but they're definitely interested. There's two elephants and a baby one in the middle there. Right here, right next to the beach. That's beautiful, I love these animals. But I make sure to keep my distance, because I've heard that this species, forest elephants, can be really aggressive, especially when they're young. I find myself surrounded by mangrove trees. That means I must be getting close to the lagoon. But then, I stumbled upon a small fishing village. Bonjour. Bonjour. Beau uh, gros filet, hein? Pêchez quoi avec ces filets? Bon, oh, on pêche un peu beaucoup de poissons avec euh, mulet. Mais est-ce qu'il y a quelqu'un qui s'y connaît un peu dans les gros, les gros poissons ici Oui, il y a Jonas. Mais il a eu un souci avec sa plantation qui a été dévastée par les éléphants. Ah, par les éléphants Oui. I've already heard stories of elephants causing damage to local plantations. And I know they can sometimes be aggressive towards humans. Bonjour, vous êtes Jonas Oui. C'est moi, Jonas. Bonjour, Cyril. Enchanté. Qu'est-ce qui s'est passé ici Pff, Regarde. Ce sont des éléphants qui ont dévasté ma plantation. C'est difficile, c'est difficile. J'en ai marre d'ailleurs. Je comprends, hein? C'est incroyable. Ils ont détruit un bon chunk de sa plantation. 
Because what they do is they, they grab the, the, the plant and they rip it out of the ground to reach this, the, uh, the root, the manioc. Et vous, qu'est-ce que vous faites là? Je fais de la, de la, de la pêche. J'essaye de prendre un, un rouge, un gros coubera. Mais ça? vous êtes bien tombé donc. Ouais, vous êtes bien tombé. He tells me that he knows where monster coubera's can be found. And he has a boat we could use. But with the state of his plantation, fishing is the last thing on his mind, at least for now. Est-ce que je peux faire quelque chose? Est-ce que je peux, je peux t'aider à faire quelque chose? Ah là, vraiment. Je peux plus rien faire là. Hein? C'est difficile. Désolé, Jonas. With Jonas's boat, it'll be easier to get to the fish. But he can't take me out for a couple of days. So I have no choice but to keep fishing alone from the shore. I'm liking this. The tide is going out right now. You see that black water, that really dark water? That means it's water coming from the lagoon and it's been flushed out into the ocean, charged with food, shrimp, fish, crabs, you name it. And the predator fish know that, so they come in to feed. Even the birds are hunting the bait fish. I'm rigging a big lure to mimic an injured fish swimming on the surface. But the predator fish are hunting too far from the shore. I just can't reach them. I let out some line so my lure can be carried out by the current towards the hunting fish. But no bite. Man, that's frustrating. <laughs> it's really frustrating. But. I can't control what the bait fish is going to do. I can't ask the fish to come close to shore, right? The only way to reach these fish is to close the gap between them and me. Here in the estuary, there's, there's not too many crocodiles. But they're monster bull sharks, though. So that's why you don't want to venture too, too far into the surf. Bull sharks are known for hunting in shallow water, and that's why I can only go so deep. But this is already pushing it. Man, there's a huge fish that popped up to the surface right there, about 100 feet from the shore from where I am right now. I don't know what it was, but I think it was a shark. I can almost reach him. And it looks like they're coming in closer. I might get a shot. Here we go. I don't know what it is yet. It's gonna be a surprise. Eha! Either a Kaber or a Jack. Oh no, it's a Longfin. It's a Longfin Trevelli. Yes, beautiful long fin trevally. It looks like a jack trevally, but it's not. It's the same family, but it's got those long fins. That's what it's called, a long fin trevally. Typical African species. And uh, I'm gonna keep it in the water to keep it breathing, but you know what's, what's really cool about those fish is the way they hunt. They're really efficient hunters because they herd the, the, the bait fish into a very tight bait ball. And usually they push the bait all the way close to the surface because it blocks them on the surface and then they pound them from all sides. That's why the attacks are very visual because you see the bait exploding everywhere. Really cool sight. Try a different spot. Wow. What's that? Look at the size of that bone. That's huge. It's got to be a whale's rib. Impressive. Impressive. There's some big animals around here.
As the sun starts to go down, it's time to get casting again. I'm liking this. The light is starting to fade. This is the time of day that the big predators come in to feed. Should be pretty good. All day, I kept trying to reach fish that were hunting too far from shore. But as night falls, they should come in closer. Sizable for sure. I think it might be a tarpon. I'm getting some jumps. Tarpon, tarpon, it's a tarpon. I saw the jump. It's right here, it's in the surf. Fish is right here. We just got off. Just got off the hook. Well, there it is. There it is. Yeah. Beautiful A little baby tarpon. A beautiful animal. Man, these fish are prehistoric. They've been around for 100 million years. They can even breathe air. They can come up to the surface and breathe air. They have a sort of a primitive lung that allows them to, to, to breathe in places where there's no oxygen in the water. And they can live in salt water, brackish water, and even fresh water. And it can become huge, much bigger than this. Close to 300 pounds. This would be considered, this is considered a baby tarpon. There you go, buddy. After a long 14-hour day, casting heavy lures, I think it's time to get a little sleep. I haven't found the big cabaret I'm looking for yet, but I still managed to catch some really nice fish. This morning, instead of fishing at the mouth of the lagoon, I'm going to try my luck elsewhere. It's been grueling, trying to catch fish that have been just outside my reach. I think I should try the deeper waters in this huge lagoon. Cabarrus love its brackish waters. But according to my GPS, to get there, I'm gonna have to cross the jungle. It's important when you when you're walking in the forest like this, is to frequently stop and listen. Because there's some big animals here. And you don't want to startle them. I keep an eye on the GPS to make sure I don't get off track. Whoa, what's that? Gorilla. It's a gorilla. Wow. Gorillas can be extremely territorial, so I don't stick around. There's one up in the tree there. I think I've just walked in on a family of gorillas. There's a BB up there. You gotta be careful of the parents. Whoa, 
And here's the big male of the group. These animals can be massive, over 450 pounds. They're usually docile, but it can get very aggressive if they feel threatened. I gotta stick around now. Never know. I finally find my way out of the jungle and into the mangroves. That means I must be getting to the lagoon. Oh, there's a crocodile over there. But finding a clear enough spot to cast from the shore is pretty tricky. There's not a lot of spots that I can fish from the shore. I'm very limited here. This lagoon has a lot of potential, but from the shore, not much. fish and the fight is far from over ah man it's going down to the rocks i can feel the rocks on the bottom that's ah, not good if the fish gets around a rock the line might break i'm gaining gaining a little bit there's still a chance i might get this fish all of a sudden the fish takes off on a run something's not right And this fish is a freight train. It's no fish. That was that was meant to happen. Man, I'm so bummed out right now. Cause that was a monster fish. Huge. And also I really thought I had this fish under control at one point, you know, because I was uh, getting line, the fish was I thought the fish was out of the rocks, so he was coming in. But then all of a sudden, boom, you know, this fish started taking off full speed towards deep water. Unstoppable. I don't think it was the fish. I think the fish that was on my line was already a monster fish and then something happened. I think a shark took it and then headed for, for deep water because there was no stopping this fish. If there are sharks on the hunt here, man, I'd better move on to a different spot. According to my GPS, it looks like there's another good place to fish from the shore. But to get there, I got a little bit of walking to do across a clearing. And then I'll have to go through a small forest to get to a point that juts out into the lagoon. Whoa, there's something in the trees there. Ooh, yeah. Let's try to get in somewhere else. It's an elephant, and he's not alone. I tried to avoid the elephants by going a little further over. If I want to get to the spot, I've got to go through the forest. I'm not really tempted right now. Man, they're just everywhere in this forest. There's no way around it. Man, now it looks like they're following us. Over there, another one in the trees there. Forget about this spot. Don't move, this one might charge. If I turn my back, I'm afraid they'll charge. So I keep facing them. Apparently, it's a thing to do 
to keep him from charging. Watch out, it's coming up, it's charging. They are coming up. Watch out. Whoa, easy, buddy, easy. Let's get out of here. Yes! The cameraman and I threw ourselves down a steep incline. They stopped. You all right? Yeah. That was crazy. We just got charged by a couple elephants. It looks like they don't want to follow us down here. I think they're afraid of falling down the slope. That is crazy. Wait, 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 wait. We're trapped between the elephants and the water. If they charge again, we'll have to take our chances with the sharks and the crocs. He's coming back. He's gonna charge again. I've never seen elephants that aggressive. There must have been babies in the forest. It's still there. It lifts its leg. I don't know what that means. Maybe they can crush us. Yeah, they're backing up. Yeah, let's get out of here. <laughs> I'm telling you, I never ran that fast in my life. <laughs> it's crazy. There's elephants on one side, and then sharks on the other. And, and you know, there's an amazing feeling about this whole thing is that it's okay, they're not predators, but you realize, man, I'm this small. All of a sudden, you're not at the top of the food chain anymore. And I'm being attacked by a monstrous animal. <laughs> it's like being, it's like being back in the Jurassic, you know, being chased by a T-Rex. That is adrenaline rush. Big time. <sighs> Monster adrenaline rush. I haven't caught the giant cabar I want yet, but I still got some nice fish. With a boat, I have access to more spots than from the shore. And it seems like luck is on my side, because Jonas, the fisherman whose plantation was destroyed by elephants, now has time to take me out. This dugout canoe is incredible because it's carved out of a single massive tree. This is one trunk, one whole tree right there. It can take them weeks, even months to build one. And here they call them pirogues. Allez, belle ta pirogue, hein? Oui, merci. Super belle. Merci. <laughs> We're gonna fish with live bait. So first, we gotta catch some. This house is beautiful. We're right in the middle of the mangroves at low tide. It's in these tidal marshes that Jonas always comes to get his bait fish. Des tilapia. Bien joué, Jonas. Jonas is really good at catching bait. A real pro. Oh. Oh, ouais. Deux. Deux, bravo. Un tilapia et un kubara. Un petit kubara? Ouais, oui. Ah, ouais. Check this out. 
a tiny Kubera. It's hard to believe that those fish can grow to over 100 pounds. Monsters capable of pulling a man overboard. We filled up on bait, and now we're off after a big Kubera. We're headed to one of Jonas' favorite spots, a place that only a few locals know about. There's a deep hole here where Kubera gathered to hunt. I tied a balloon onto the line, about four feet above the bait. That way, not only will I see the head, but also... The idea of the balloon is to keep the bait suspended in the water column. Because those fish, they live on the bottom, that's where they are, in the rocks, they love rocks. So if you put the bait there, but you know, if the, and if the fish attacks the bait, it'll go straight into a hole or a cave and it'll break you off. So this forces the fish to come up, grab the bait, and by the time it gets down, you're on and you can keep it out of the hole. But for now, it's just a nice little blue balloon floating. We'll see what happens to it. I just back on one point. J'espère aussi. Tu sais, ici il y a des très grands poubras. Quelle taille? Des tailles de 50 kilos. 50 kilos? Ça passe même, ça peut dépasser 50 kilos. Donc. But Jonas tells me that these fish are so powerful, they can even capsize the boat. And falling in the water here can be very dangerous. Il y a des gros bulldogs ici, non? Il y a des gros bulldogs, donc il euh, faut éviter de tomber à l'eau. <rire> oh, le balloon moved. Oh. Jonas, c'est du gros ça. Ah, c'est big fish. Coming straight to the boat. No. Lost him right here. Got off. C'était beau ça, hein? C'était beau. Lost the fish right here. Ça c'était quoi, tu penses? Je pense que c'était un coup bas. Ouais, gros? Gros, c'était gros. Look, the whole metal leader is twisted. Ok, on en met un appât, hein? Oui. On y retourne? On y retourne, ouais. It's so frustrating to have lost such a nice fish. We didn't see it, but it was probably the Kubera I've been chasing. In any case, it proves that there's some big fish in Jonas' spot. Si tu vois ce qu'il y avait tout à l'heure, il s'est dirigé direct sous la pirogue. Il est passé direct sous la pirogue. Hein? Direct sous la pirogue. Et c'est comme ça, comme ils arrivent souvent à se défendre, c'est comme ça. Oh, here we go, here we go. I think it's the shark. His head shakes not typical of sharks. Jonas rushes to bring up the anchor. If this really is a shark, we're gonna have to bring it to shore to release it. It's way too dangerous to do it from the boat. It's directly underneath the, the pearl right now. But the boat is too long. I can't bring the line over to the other side. We're fighting a shark right now. And from a pearl, an unstable pearl. It's not a giant. 
But it's a shark. I think, I think it's a bull. <sighs> yeah, it's coming up. It's coming up. Here it is. Yeah, it's a bull shark. Bull shark. Blue bull shark. <sighs> We're getting close to the shore, but it's not over yet. I have to release the shark without hurting it. Uh, oh, yeah. And without getting bit. Décrocher. Merci. Merci. There's no way I'm leaving a hook in this shark's mouth. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to remove it. Okay. It's a juvenile bull shark. What's characteristic about these sharks is that they love brackish water environments like estuaries, lagoons like here, close to shore. And they can go really far into freshwater. They can live in freshwater. They've been found up the, uh, the Amazon River, like 2,000 miles up the Amazon River. Same thing in the Mississippi River. They've been found way up in the Mississippi. And I love these animals. They have such a bad rep, sharks in general. You know, more than 100 million sharks are slaughtered every year, for mo mostly for their fins. And yet, they're, they're very important for the environment. They regulate the environment. They balance the ecosystem. It's a creature we have to respect and protect. Take care, buddy. Jonah. C'est pas ce qu'on voulait, mais... On voulait surtout pas le laisser... Bye bye. Avec un hameçon. Before we get back to the Cabrera, Jonas wants to get a little natural pick-me-up. C'est là. On va essayer. C'est ça les bougas? Oui, c'est ça les bougas. Locals here use the iboga root for a boost of energy, a little like caffeine, but much stronger. And apparently, elephants love it too. Attends, mais les éléphants ils mangent ça. Ils mangent ça, et c'est ce qui les rend un peu nerveux. The locals are convinced that this root is what makes the elephants aggressive. Il bon? Ouais. C'est de la bonne. C'est la bonne. Nah. De très amer. Stuff is bitter. Yeah. C'est hallucinogène aussi. C'est ça. Les parents aussi utilisent ça. Dans He says that in small doses it can wake you up, give you a kick, you know, but in uh, in large doses it can give you a whole new perspective on the world. Donne-moi un peu plus. <laughs> <laughs> ok. Ah. Come on, take it, take it. Yeah, it's got it. Big bite. Nice fish. Hey, Jonas, c'est gros, ça. Gros pouvoir. What a run. Yet, but it kind of moves like a cabara. Attention, Cyril, faut pas qu'on chavire parce qu'il y a des équipes par, partout ici. Nice head shakes. I managed to get some line back. It's coming up, coming up, coming up. It's a nice cabara. Oh. But just as I bring it close to the surface, it dives straight back down. Ouais, ils sont, ils sont pas sous la pirogue comme tu avais dit. Attention. Exactly like the first one I lost, it's trying to swim under the boat, and I could easily lose it. I don't see it yet, but it's right here. I mean, to the leader, so. Oh! C'est énorme! 
Bah non, là, pour moi, c'est lui, c'est bon, ça. <rire> Il est énorme. Il est énorme. Il est énorme. C'est exactement ce que je voulais. Ce de fish. I meant to catch this whole time I've been here. <rire> Look at the size of this Kubera! Now, I'm happy. That's exactly what I've been chasing. The African Kubera snapper. The mother of all snappers, right here. Look at the teeth on that fish. It's like a wolf's mouth. They use those, those fangs and those hyper-powerful jaws to crush lobsters, crabs, and even fish like the bait I had. And let me tell you, you don't want to get your hands too close to that mouth, because if you, if you get caught in his jaws, it's like being trapped in a bear trap. <laughs> They're so powerful. Il est gros, hein? Ouais, il est très gros. Elle fait combien, tu penses? Elle... Celui-là, il est à 30 kilos et quelques. 30 kilos? Et plus? Non. Oh, je, Autant? Je, je, autant. Oh my God! Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's put him back in the water. Oh, buddy. It's in great shape. He's gone. <laughs> Jonas, merci beaucoup. Je vous en prie, Cyril. Superbe endroit. Tu savais qu'il y avait des monstres ici, hein? Je savais. <laughs> I finally caught the monster Kubera I was after. A few years ago in Guinea-Bissau, I had such a powerful Kubera on the line that he pulled me out of the boat. This time, I had to come back to West Africa, to the wilds of Gabon. Run! And I almost got trampled by elephants. But finally, with Jonas's help, I managed to land a monster fish. <laughs> Look at the size of this Kubera! 